much for joining us today. This is our monthly Hedera Engineering Insights webinar. Uh, my name is Pretty Gentle. I'm on the product marketing team. Uh, we're joined by uh, Simi Kunjan, uh, who's developer advocate at Hedera Hashgraph. And today uh, we're going to be talking about Hedera Services Code 0 0.18, which is released on the uh, testnet September 23rd. And uh, it's going to be available on the mainnet on October 7th. Uh, Simi is going to dive into what's included in that release. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Hedera Improvement Proposal 23, which is automatic token associations. Uh, and then Simi's going to jump into the change log and deprecations reminder. Um, so there is a Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom chat. Uh, please feel free to drop any questions into the Q&A box and we'll get to them at the end. And with that, I'll pass things over to Simi to jump in 0 0.18. Thanks, Brady. Hey, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great Monday. We'll go ahead and chat a little bit about the 018 Hedera services release. So we just had our testnet update last Thursday on September 23rd. In this release, uh, we included support for HIP 23, uh, which is token auto associations that Brady will talk about in just a minute. Um, but in summary, this feature allows you to auto associate tokens. So previously we would have to associate a token and then transfer that token to that account. With this feature, you're able to um, transfer those tokens without having to go through this specific process. The other thing that we did um, was we enabled token fee schedule updates. So that API should now be working on testnet and then also going into the mainnet release. Um, the next thing that we did was uh, we are now populating the service endpoint fields. So this is relevant for those that are parsing the address book files. You probably used um, node address um, up until uh, now to parse the address book files. Um, some of those fields in that protobuf were, mess were uh, deprecated. And um, you are supposed to use the service endpoint a uh, new message type to parse those address book files. So uh, going forward, uh, we will now populate the service endpoint fields. And in the next couple of releases, we will no longer populate the node address book fields. The other thing that we did in this release was mark uh, get token NFT infos and get account NFT infos as deprecated. So those will be marked as deprecated for the next six months before we remove them from the happy. And that's the gist of what we did for the 018 release. I'll pass it back to Brady to talk about HIP 23. Awesome. Thanks, Simi. And um, that 0 0.18 release is that? That's uh, October 7th still, yeah? Yeah, for me, not for, October. For me. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Cool. Um, so I'll dive into a little bit of the token auto association functionality that's coming down the line. That's uh, Hedera Improvement Proposal 23. As Simi mentioned, uh, on Hedera, when creating uh, a token and trying to send it from, uh, from one account to another, every account on Hedera has to be associated with uh, a token ID if it's trying to receive and hold a custom token created for the token service. And we found that there were some challenges in having uh, that functionality be the way that it was. Obviously, it was initially set up to try and prevent um, spamming on the network and overloading an account with uh, a ton of fungus tokens. But it also introduced this friction uh, into the functionality. So um, uh, what, you know, um, the way that it had worked on other public distributed ledgers is that you can send any sort of token type to uh, an account and it doesn't have to associate it with that unique token ID. With token auto association, uh, you're no longer required to associate a specific token ID to the account in order to receive it. You can actually open up um, up to 1,000 token slots 
and then receive tokens automatically without having to manually associate them. And so some of the use cases that we anticipate people utilizing with this functionality is across decentralized exchanges, wallets, and uh, applications such as uh, an NFT marketplace. Um, so for decentralized exchanges, you know, we anticipate the ability for someone to go to that decentralized exchange and be able to trade tokens that were custom created using HTS without having to automatically associate their account with it. And in many cases, um, you, know, you bring your wallet with, uh, with uh, HBAR and you're able to participate in a decentralized exchange and you would receive uh, you know, like a example, which is native to the decentralized exchange itself, they anticipate fees to pop up on Hedera at a certain point. And uh, it adds friction if you have to be able to associate uh, a specific coupon token with the account in order to receive it. By being able to auto associate it, you can just receive tokens freely with the open slots that you've programmed into your account. Um, for wallets, very similar situation with token auto associate. Um, you're able to freely send and receive HTS tokens as long as the number of open slots are available. And then for something like an NFT marketplace, you know, if uh, folks are purchasing NFTs on this marketplace, each NFT is uh, a unique token ID, and so. Uh, having to auto associate the or having to associate the account with uh, the specific token ID prior to receiving it introduces additional friction, allows people to less freely navigate and move through all these different decentralized uh, applications and environments. So opening up all of these slots just makes it much easier uh, for folks to um, folks to utilize the data in this case. Um, and if you have questions about Token Auto Associate, definitely please ask it in the Q&A box and Simi and I can get to that at the end. And back to Simi on changelog and deprecations. Thanks, Brady. Um, one of the things I wanted to note that we are deprecating support for the um, Hedera Java JavaScript V1 SDKs um, as of this upcoming October. So, the features that are going into this year 18 mainnet release um, scheduled for October 7th will only have uh, SDK v2 support. Um, going forward, we will still address any bug fixes with uh, v1 of the SDKs, but if you would like to have access to any of our new features, you would need to update to v2 of the Java and JavaScript SDKs. And I think I already touched on this one. But this is the, the change that we are um, doing with the parsing the address book files. So we have this new service endpoint protocol message and we've deprecated um, about six months ago a few of the fields in the node address book. I'm sorry, the node address protocol message. And so this is just a reminder um, to update to the new protobuf message to parse those address book files. And uh, that's all I have for today. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Simi. So we'll leave uh, a little bit of time here for some questions. The Q&A box is open, so please feel free to ask any questions about things that we talked about today or um, you know, other developer-related questions. Happy to answer those as well, network-related questions. Pretty much anything goes. It's an open conversation. Okay, question from Drew. Does the 1,000 token slot matter if the, if the person buys multiple quantities of the same token? Or does the unique token ID count as one regardless of the amount? So um, the unique token ID counts as one regardless of the amount that's in there. So it's up to 1,000 uh, unique token ID slots.
Still open for questions, or you maybe just another minute or so. Thanks, Drew. Thanks for joining. All right. Well, if no more questions, um, we'll close things down and catch you guys next month. As always, we're available um, in the Discord chat. So if you have any questions that uh, is developer related or feature related on Hedera, I'm always happy to answer those. And it looks like one other question came through actually from Bob right now. So uh, I had pre-submitted a question by email about zero mainnet downtime during upgrades. Is that a capability and will it be released? And so in what time frame? Yes. So uh, there is a functionality on Hedera um, called connect, reconnect, and update. It's the ability to uh, connect a node, a new node to the Hedera network uh, without having to uh, have the network in a sort of maintenance downtime period to reconnect a node that had gone offline uh, initially and is being brought back online and synced. And then the third is being able to update nodes without um, any sort of downtime and uh, incredibly important features for uh, the availability of Dara. In terms of the timeline for that, um, we're looking at reconnect, update, and connect being completed by the end of uh, Q1 2022. So the team is hard at work on um, all three of those different aspects. It's also um, obviously incredibly important from the perspective of ensuring Hedera's network has true decentralization. Um, it's also a requirement uh, in order for us to be able to reach permissionless nodes on the network. Good question, Bob. Thanks for asking that. And sorry you missed the email also that you had sent initially. All right. Well, if that was the uh, all the questions we have, again, um, we're on Discord, uh, available through email. Please feel free to reach out. Uh, appreciate everybody joining today, and um, we'll catch you again soon. Thanks so much, Simi, also for uh, jumping on and describing the latest updates. And I'll catch you guys soon.